So a lot of times uh, we have these fancy units that we don't even use all the features on. So we'll have like, uh, like my brother has a Helix 10, I have a Helix 8. It's got all the bells and whistles. But if we're fishing a real small pond or we're fishing a small river, you hardly ever use half the features. So we're going to really recommend a couple of units that have 2D at water temperature only. They're going to be in the video description. You can click on them and you can go buy them. And they will be under $200. Basically, they'll have water depth and water temperature only. But the thing is, that's all you need. Even from a $1,000 unit, if you're fishing ponds, you're fishing small rivers and streams, that's all you need. Water temp and water depth. Because you're not going to be much deeper than 20 feet. Pretty much 95% of the time. So you don't need a really expensive unit. You just need something that gives you the basics. And that's what we'll recommend. Like I said, we'll have uh, a link to uh, where you can buy one. The ones that we recommend, we'll have one recommendation from Hummingbird. We'll have a recommendation from Garmin. And we'll have a recommendation from Lowrance. Okay, so please use those links. Because if you do, if you do buy them, they are affiliate accounts. And we do get a little bit of kickback, which helps us continue the series. So thanks for helping us out. And uh, let's get to the show. Alright guys, uh, if you've watched this far already, I'd really appreciate it if you uh, subscribe to the channel. And if you have friends that are having sonar questions, ultrasonic questions, please share the video with them. I know my graphics ain't the best, and I'm not the best on YouTube in terms of graphics, but you know what? I promise you I'll give you the best information. Okay, we got two frequencies here. Okay, we got the 80 and 200. The difference between them is the beam angle. A wide angle versus a tighter angle. Not drawn exact, just to give you guys an example, right? But that's what it is. The main problem here is just the coverage. See the bottom coverage here? It's such a it's like it's definitely a third of that, right? 20 to 60? It's a third. So when do you use this and when do you use this? This is something that I don't see anybody cover. When you're running around looking for a ditch, that's the one you want ditch in shallow water that's the one you want when you're video game fishing that's the one you want okay but but if you're less than 30 feet you probably, probably want this one it's wider you want more coverage on the ground if you're more than 30 feet you want this one okay okay just when you're scanning around trying to find things okay so that's kind of something that you have to kind of play with and those are good rules of thumbs to go off of but in terms of looking for fish, when you're, if you found something, you want to go uh, video game fish, you want to drop the fish lures or whatever, A-rigs, Tamiki rigs, drop shot, throw in a jig, things like that. Here's where the problem comes in. I think this is where majority of the mistakes and confusion start. So let me explain. Okay, so here's your two beams, right? This is your screen. Okay, you see that? That's your screen. The screen on 2D is drawn like this. Zero is the top of the water, goes down to the bottom, which is the bottom here. Okay, simple enough. Sonar, 2D sonar is very fast. Okay, starts on the right, goes to the left. So everything you see on this screen, on this side, is, is happening right now. Everything on this side is old. And depending on your chart speed, this can be real fast or it can be real slow. Okay, so that's, a, that's something you have to play with. By default, the manufacturers put them right in the middle. Okay. Uh, if All those videos that you see, all those demos that you see where there's just thousands and thousands of arches, they have it on the slowest speed, which is speed one. Okay. If you're video game fishing, you want it on a higher speed, seven, eight, nine, or even 10 speed, because you want to see the now. You want this whole screen to be the now, almost never the new to the old. If you're scanning around, you might want it really slow. So you get an idea that when you're running, you probably cross three or four different ditches, things like that. So when you see a target here, how does it look like on here? 
This is something that I don't see on YouTube at all. Okay, so let me take my markers. Okay, so here's the other thing. So when you talk sonar, a lot of people talk how hot is the target or the reflection. So most fish finders by default will come with these colors, green and orange or yellow and red. Red, let me just draw this for you guys. So you have the green line and then you have the orange line. All right, and you got the red line. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, you can even kind of draw like that. Okay. So what does colors even mean, right? So when you see it over here, you need to understand what's happening over here. So say there's a fish. Say there's a fish. Let me, get, let me grab another mark. All right, so there's a fish. Say it's a catfish. Say this catfish is right here. Okay? If you take the same catfish and you put it on this sonar, it's over here. Okay? Let me show you how it looks over here. On this side, if you have it set up for 80, you'll see a black line. Assuming nothing moves, you'll see a black. Well, actually, you won't see a black. You'll see a green line you'll see a green line that goes like this. Say so the catfish is not doing anything, he's just sitting there. And you're just sitting there. That's what you'll see, see a green line, okay? But if you're on 200, it is now outside the cone. You're not gonna see anything, okay? If you guys follow that? If he's outside the cone, you don't see nothing over here. You don't see anything. All right, let me redraw this guy. All right. Okay. Now, what if he is, what if he's right here? And he's right here. I'll give you three seconds to take a guess. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. Pause the video now or continue watching. It's up to you. Okay, so if you have it on this E, this is what you'll see. You'll see an orange line. Okay? If you have it on 200, if you got it on 200, you'll see a green line. <laughs> How many of you guys got that right? Let me know in the comments, okay? All right. Let me draw that. Okay. I think everybody knows what's happening if I draw them right here. Right? That's the easiest one. That's the easiest one. You're going to have a red right here. Assuming the fish does not move, assuming you don't move, you're just strictly right on top of the fish. That's what you're going to see. Okay? That's 2D sonar. At its basics. Okay? Let me erase this. All right. So that's the basic. That's nothing moving, okay? What if the fish is moving, okay? Well, actually, no, let's, 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 let's rephrase that. The problem with this is if you're fishing for the fish, say this is 100 feet, right? Because right here, I just say it's the bottom, right? Say it's 100 feet down. If it's 100 feet down, and you're using the 60, Say the fish is right here, once again. Say it's right here. No, actually it's a bad example. Restart, restart. 
So now, okay, we're gonna we're just gonna stick in the red, okay? So say he's right here. He's at the edge of the red, and he's at the edge of the green. So if it's a hundred foot, it's very possible it will be like this in a hundred foot, okay? So you're gonna so so in your mind, you know which one do you go with, right? This one's got more resolution, but this one definitely you. This is where it gets tricky. Most people always want to see it red. But if you know the technology, you will read rather pick the green. Why? Okay, so why? Why would you want to see a green instead of a red? Red is meany. Red says the, the, the balance is much stronger. It is directly below you. That's what typically people are going to tell you when they see red. But this, in this case, you actually want the green. Because if it's 100 foot down, when you drop your bait down there, you might your bait your bait might be on this side. Okay, so I'll put a plus sign here. And a plus sign say right here. Okay, so you don't know how you're gonna drop your bait. You just know that when you drop your bait straight down, you can't miss very far with this. With this one, you can miss quite a bit. Okay. That's the problem with these two frequencies, okay? So a lot of times, if you're vertical jigging, you want to be on this one. Or once you find them, you know they're inside the cone, you can switch to this to see if he's still here or not. If he's not, then you know he's, he's outside this cone, he's still in this cone. You need to maybe reposition a little bit and then drop down once he's in this cone, okay? So, so that's pretty cool, something to keep track of. For, uh, for all the new guys uh, who don't understand electronics yet. That's something that, if you understand it now, boy, you are ahead of the curve, okay? So be sure you understand that, because when it comes to the other technologies, that's gonna come back to play. It will come back to play. All right, so when you're vertical fishing, a lot of times that's what you're gonna see. Uh, solid line, your bait goes down to it, you wiggle it, and you can see the you can see the fish come up, grab it, so the you wind up, you can just see this line come all the way up, and that's done. But a lot of times, I suggest that if you're really new, you want to just go sightseeing. You need to understand what the screen looks like when the fish comes in and out of the cone. Okay, so that's exactly this problem is right here. We got a fish. He goes through the cone, he leaves the cone, and he comes back to the cone. So let me explain how the time lapse is going to look over here. Okay, so when the fish comes through, say, say, I'm going to draw at three different stages, okay? So when the fish first touches the green, because this fish starts up here and he goes this way, okay? So when the fish first starts, the first time you see the fish, the fish is going to be right here. This is going to be green, okay? And, uh, and then as he's coming through, as he's coming through the cone, this green will turn to orange, and it'll turn to red, and then it'll turn back to orange, turn back to red, disappear, and then come back green, orange, red, green, again, okay? So that's when it starts. Let me see, let me show you how it's going to look as soon as he leaves the green. So you're gonna have a green. So as soon as he leaves, you'll see something like this. All right, something like this. You'll see a green. And he's dropping, he's dropping in depth, so you can see something like this. All right? You'll see some red. He'll be in the red for a little bit. Probably twice as long as the orange, is my guess. Right? And as he's exiting the right side, he goes back through the orange again. Okay? And then at the edge, you'll see a green. Okay? So that's how, that's how the screen's going to look if you're looking at him right here. Like right here, right, right when he decides to bust a U and go right back through the cone. So... When it first starts off, you'll see the green up here, and but the, as the screen plays and the fish is moving through, you can see he's moving down. 
All he's doing is he doesn't even have to be cutting across. He can just come in and back out and it'll look just like this also. So 2D can be confusing, but just just know that this is what it looks like. So how does it look when the fish is over here? Okay. Draw that again. When he's over there, you'll see something like this. Like I said, this is fairly exaggerated, but you guys get the point. Orange. Here's your red. Okay, back to your orange. Back to green. So this is actually touching. Uh, yeah. Red is actually touching the orange. It looks something like that. And then you don't get anything here. Fish has left the cone. Fish comes back into the cone. Back to green. Back to orange. Back to red. Back to orange. Back to green. Okay? That's one fish. You might think that's two, but that's still the same fish. Okay? Alright, so, I'm going to draw, but that's on the 60 degree cone. I'm going to draw the same fish, took the same path, but on the 20 degree. Okay? And on the 20 degree, basically what it's going to do, it's basically, it's just this, compressed, okay? And it's going to take longer for you to show up, and it'll take it longer to show up on radar, and it'll leave faster, okay? So, if you're going to draw the same fish on 2D, you'll see it here. Okay? I mean, it is offset a little bit, okay? Because reality, this should be right on top of that. If you're gonna, if you're gonna judge the uh, the elevation or the water depths, it'll look like this. See it? See what I'm saying? That one is the longer one. That one is the shorter one. In reality, it's probably a third, okay? This will probably be a third of that. I just kind of want to exaggerate and want to just say that you're gonna, it's gonna seem like it's a lot shorter, okay? But in reality, it's probably, if that's that long, this is probably only gonna be that long. Okay, so I'll shrink that up a bit to like that. And that's what you, ex that's, what you ex that's probably what you should see. Okay? Alright. So, if you're going to draw them separately, that's what they'll look. But, like I told you before, there's the option for 80 and 200. So you draw them both at the same time. Okay? So a lot of times, what ends up happening is, you'll see weird things looking like this. And this is where it kind of differentiates between uh, brands. Okay? So, as it comes through here, this is picking up green. This is still picking up nothing. So you got green. That's the 80. Right? And as soon as it's the orange, hits the orange, we're touching green. So what happens? We're basically going to just say, oh, look, that's green also. So we're going to draw orange and green. All right? And as it goes through the red here, we're still in orange. So we're going to draw red on top of orange. Okay? <laughs> okay? And then as it goes red and red, we got red and red. So we got a big blob of red right here. Okay? And then we got orange again. We go back to orange. As it's leaving here and here, it's going to be orange and red. And then orange and orange. 
and then green right here and green right here and as we exit here we lose it but we still in green here so we got there you go so there's the 80 and that's the gap between it and basically that's going to look the same on this side green and we're going to have green and orange oops green and orange orange and orange uh, orange going into red actually actually the red's going to be quite a bit so like that's better drawn this one this one's not as drawn to scale as it needs to be and you know, once again you have a real big red right here and you'll have an orange and you have a green of course like I said this is the 200 this is the 200 green this is the 200 green and that's the 800 green and that's that's 2d sonar in a nutshell and don't get me wrong man that's one fish or that could be two fish say that fish came through he left another fish came through and went, went down there that could be fish number one fish number two or that could be number one fish number one fish or you can have a bunch of fishes so it's not out of the question to see So that's one fish, or maybe two. It's not the question to have one fish do this, another fish do this, another fish just hang out right here, and another fish just goes across like that. It's not out of the question. That's when you get all the cool, all the really cool demo pictures, where you literally see like another fish just kind of hanging out here, another fish that does this thing, kind of goes up and down like that, and you got another fish that does this. That's where you get all those really, really, really cool pictures. But once you understand how this works, man, you got it. You got the 2D game. It's done. That is 2D. All right, guys. So hopefully you learned something about that. Let me know if I missed anything. Let me know if I goofed up, goofed up on something. You're going to have to probably repair it somehow. But let me know if that helps you. I know it's going to help a lot of people for sure. Uh, I get this question a lot too. What settings do I need? Well, that's a hard question because you need to know how to use your electronics. So, simple question, simple answer. I'll give you a very simple answer. You need to adjust the settings up and down based on what you see as for based off what you see for colors, okay? So, we we've been talking. You have three different colors right here. You need to see three different colors on your screen. It doesn't matter if it's 5 foot or 50 feet down or 100 feet down you need to see color so I'll give you an example if, if your if your settings needs to be turned up you'll see nothing but green you'll see little arches that just come kind of come and go okay you don't see any reds that's a good sign crank it up if you see nothing but red it's a good sign to crank it down so when you when you see that stuff you know how to react you know how to how to change your uh, uh, your, your, your unit settings and you can mess with your friends quite a bit if they don't know their own settings so if they mess with your settings you're just like doo -doo 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 -doo, bam fixed it because during the day you're going to be changing these settings I'll give you an example right if you're fishing shallow right so you're fishing that uh, say 20 foot zone and you're having a bad day you're, you're thinking oh, they, they gotta be deeper than that they gotta be in the 50 60 foot zone well, I tell you what, when you go from 20 to 60, you're going to have to crank up that sensitivity, okay? So so you want to see the full spectrum of colors, is what I'm trying to say. You want to see a, a, good, uh, a good collection of red, a good collection of uh, greens, and, and everything else between. Now, if you crank up your sensitivity all the way, you will be picking up a lot of other things, too. You might be picking up trash, debris thermal clients, things like that. That's what you can do with 2D sonar. And thermal client is a pretty cool thing to see in March, April, mainly in June. So, so 2D can reveal thermal client, okay? If you guys want to know more about that, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so now it's time for the good stuff, okay? So we're going to use a flashlight to demo uh, sensitivity, and we're going to use it to demo 
cones, okay? So before I was telling you, just imagine this cone. Well, now you can see it if you follow along. Okay, so this flashlight is going to be your your ultrasonic, it's your cone. So I want you, I want you guys to pay attention to this, right? So in the white, in the clear white right here, this is going to be your red, your red color. This is the hottest. It's in the center. And everything on the outside, maybe halfway out, that's going to be orange. And from about halfway out to the very edge, that's going to show you green, okay, on, on, the, uh, on the screen of your fish finder. Of course, this is where the sensitivity turned down. If you turn the sensitivity up, okay, and even more, you see how much more energy that is? So your transducer does not actually do this. Your transducer sends out the same amount of energy every time. But when you turn the sensitivity on and off, the only way I can demo that is by doing this. So for the most part, say, say that's your, say that's your default. Okay, ships like that. That's your default. So today I'm gonna really want to show you guys how important it is to understand this cone thing. Because if you think about it, if your cone, if you're really close to 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 the ground, so say you're in shallow water, your cone coverage is real small. Okay, and I want you to look at this. This is my example. I got three rocks, three purple rocks, a black rock on the side, and some grass. So that's that's how it looks on the top. Side view looks like this. Okay, so just kind of imagine that. And uh, say we're really close, right? So we're really like, so it's a giant rock and we're only in five foot of water. In five foot of water, this is actually what your your uh, boat's doing. This is the coverage it's getting. Okay, not very, not very good. So once again, looks like this. It's probably going to be too sensitive. So you want to turn that sucker down. Even maybe just to that. That's more than enough. That's more than enough. But, once again, as you can see, the cone angle does not change. Cone angle stays the same. Until your boat is in deeper water. So say you just had the same rocks in the lake, but now your lake's flooded. So when your lake is flooded, you come through, it's a pretty far shot now. So you can barely see those rocks. You got to increase your sensitivity. You guys want to see what I'm saying? So here it is. So in order to see those rocks, you got to increase your sensitivity. And if you're super high up, you got to increase it even more. Kind of like that. Alright? But once again, pay attention to beam angle. You got to hold it at a slight angle so you guys can see it. But So here's your if you're really, really short, oh, here you go. This is your coverage. Looks like this. But if you're higher, your coverage looks like this. Okay? If the problem with this is, if you're too close, you might miss the target. So you could be here. But if you're, if you're at the same spot, but higher, you can actually see it. So think of the sonar thing like is like a flashlight, okay? Once again, here, right on top but you could be way over here you can miss it completely okay so hope that kind of explains uh, a little bit into kind of positioning and how cone angles can affect things so now we're going to go into what does this look like assuming you go directly over it and assuming you got regular sensitivity just on standard sensitivity once again we'll crank it down to standard sensitivity Standard sensitivity, we go over the rocks just like this. Just like that. But keep in mind, that one's kind of off to, this, off to the side a little bit. And you know, we're going to go over it just like that. Okay? So how does that look on your screen? That's what everyone's uh, probably going to be wanting to know. And the main difference between looking at something on the bottom and looking at something that's halfway up in the river or up in the water column specifically if you're looking at fish generally speaking if you have a say a 24 inch fish swimming in and out of the cones all these fish will pretty much look the same but that does not hold true for bottom type stuff when you're talking grass versus rocks the same the same rock in the same 
grass in terms of volumes or in terms of sizes, they're not going to return the same colors. Okay, so so let me just run over that. So we're just going to go like that again, like I said, and I'll I'll bring all my markers again. And we'll draw this out. So you got here's your color palette. I mean, color palettes can change, but that's what I got. We got green, orange, and red. So we're going over this. So we're coming over this. We got green. So when you see green, more than likely, you'll see something that looks kind of green. Okay? And at the very tips, the very top, near the top, you might get some reds. That's just if it is, that's if this is a very leafy grass, you'll get some bounces like that. And then immediately you go to the first rock. So the first rock is going to look something like this. Because you're coming right over the rock, perfectly over the rock, you'll see a lot of reds. Kind of like that. You might get a little bit of orange in there. You might get a little bit of orange. Depending on how sensitive you put the sensitivity is. Because if you crank this thing, if you crank the sensitivity all the way up, all this might be red. But assuming we got the perfect balance, you'll see something like this. So let's just bring that back down to the ground. All right. And once again, you got another rock. It's about the same size. Get some more orange going. There you go. But at the same time, as you can see, there's some grass behind this rock grass behind it. So, you'll see green, and you might see some reds, a little bit, okay? And then we're going to hit the big rock. Big rock is always red. Big rock, big red. So far, so simple. Yep. Okay. You guys see some orange. But then again, there's a little black rock right there. So little black rock shows up red. Okay. And then we got some grass on the end. So this grass, it's a big clump of grass. So a big clump of grass. More than likely, you're gonna see something like that, right? But on this clump of grass, it's so big, it will have a lot of reflections, red reflections. Cut all over it. Kind of like that. That's something to be expected, like I said. But not exact all the time, but that's what that would look like on your fish finder, okay, as you cruise over it. Any questions with that? Let me know in the comments. We'll try to explain or expand on that. So, for bass fishermen, this is actually what they're really targeting. A lot of it is structure fishing, so you need to go find grass, you need to find rocks, and this is pretty much the perfect example for bass. It's a good mix of everything. Big rocks, small rocks and grass in between. If you find this, this is usually a gold mine for, uh, for the world of bass fishing. So, so that's pretty much uh, all I got for a 2D sonar. It's very basic, it's the most basic technology out there. But at the same time, as you can see, there's already so many different uses for it. And the other technologies, they're just gonna keep piling on, you know? So after 2D sonar, we're gonna talk about mapping, and topo maps and that that type of stuff because I want to organize this uh, series kind of based on the prices of the units so all the cheap units 2d sonar the next level up is usually GPS mapping that type of stuff and then it goes down imaging and then it goes side imaging and then it goes advanced frequencies and then it goes two units three units four units and why you want those many units and then we're gonna go to forward-facing sonar and we're going to talk of pros and cons, 2D versus down imaging, 2D versus everything else, 
basically 2D versus the universe. And then we'll talk about panoptics versus everybody else. And we'll talk about you know, differences in uh, units, why certain brands do certain things a little better than other brands, and why um, why the world of fishing is so expansive. Gosh dang it. So have, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next one. All right, guys? See ya.